Now is it working? Okay, not there. I don't know how, but the mic, the default mic got reset. But, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Finally finishing up that Genshin event. Oh my god, I just remembered. Delxy doesn't actually speak gibberish. I need to pull up my Morse code translator thing. Where is it? Where is it? Morse code translator... Okay, got it pulled up just in case. Hey, Fremenay! Doxy! We're here! 
Hello, Paimon. Hello, traveler. Hello there. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. Dash, dot, dot. Dash, dot, dot, dot. Dot, dash, dash. Dash, dot, dot, dot. Okay, what does that mean? C A What? Hang on a minute. It was shifted by one. Which way was it though? Like the cipher, whatever, it was supposed to be a shift of one. God damn it, what the hell? Add, go away. If shifted back by one, then that would mean... Oh! Saba! <laughs> Is the crown ready? Yes, we're just waiting for Zuria now. She hasn't arrived yet. Paimon? Hey. Oh, and speaking of... Found you two at long last. Uh, I'm so glad that you both are all right. Oh, right. Here, I remember her now. Huh? Why are you here, Miss Delaroche? And what could have happened to us? What could have happened? That water imp Felxy, of course. After I gave you that commission the other day, I began to get worried and went asking about the boy that went missing. Oh, that was just Fremenay. Oh, that? We've got it all figured out now. The boy you heard about was just Fremenay. Even the missing fish was his fault. Don't worry, we'll help you get the fish back as soon as we're done with this job. Oh, sorry about that. I've been diving in the area recently. Yeah. Huh? Remenay? Diving? No, 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 that's not what happened at all. I've heard a completely different account. What? What do you mean different? I thought we already resolved this. What I was told is that about a month ago, a child tied a bunch of heavy seashells onto his body and walked into this open stretch of water. He never came back. What could that be if not that water imp's work? Oh, okay. Are... are you sure? One hundred percent sure. I've confirmed the account with several veteran fishermen I know. The child was only eight years old. His name was Lesko. Lesko Destray. Wait, what? Wait, Lesko Destray? Isn't that What's-Her-Face's kid? Yeah, that's the name. They say the family took on the name after moving to the city from a place called Stray. Anyway, Mother is a pretty famous art dealer, while his father oh, passed away it, from an accident many years ago. Pretty famous art dealer? From an accident many years ago. Uh, well, naturally, his mother was devastated by the incident and fell terribly ill. It's said that she left the court of Fontaine, and no one knows where she's gone. I think we know. It... it, it can't be, right? Lesko Destre? Zuria Destre? It, it, it must be some sort of a coincidence? Oh, man. Um... This took one hell of a turn. Shit. I'm sorry, miss. We've got to go check on something right now. 
Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, you go on ahead. I just came to make sure that you're both all right. I'll head back then. Uh, please remember to take care. I know she's voiced another- this- this BA has voiced another character before, but I can't quite pin it. A melusine? Go, Farina, go! Alright, rest up a sec. Go, Farina, go! Uh, if only we had Ayaka and Yelan. <laughs> Between the two of them. Oh, wait. Seriously? There was a teleport spot up here? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh well, it's good to get your cardio in. here who needs quiet bed rest. Please leave us be unless you have anything urgent to report. Who is the patient? This is the residence of Zuria Destri, and I'm Jala Khan, her family doctor. What did you mean by your question just now? Who else could be my patient? Your patient should be Zuria's son, right? She told us herself that her son had contracted loneliness syndrome. No, you're right. Young Master Lesko did have that illness once upon a time, but he's... Well, the young master's no longer with us. And now, the Madame has come down with the same illness. Are you... her friends, by any chance? Oh, we tell the doctor all oh. that happened. So, when she had requested time to go out over the past few days, it was so she could spend them with you. So, if I'm understanding this right, the one who's suffering from uncontrollable delusions is the madame herself? She believes her son is still alive? Oh, man. Um, this really took a turn. I was not expecting this. That is correct. When the young master... disappeared, she was organizing an art exhibit that she had specifically prepared for him. But since she had to leave the house, she was unable to see her son one last time. That might have been the trigger for her regret. Or perhaps the family's fall into loneliness and grief was inevitable as soon as the old master passed away. First the son, and then the mother. But how could that be? She really looked like she had a handle on everything. Her smile was so lovely, and she even told us to stay optimistic. But you're saying she... Those actions are proof that she can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Okay. Then, all the other things that she told us about her son, were those fake too? No, those were all real. Although... They were all things that happened before the young master left us for good. Madame's time has just never moved forward since his passing. Oh, man. Um... I see. So after her son left, she created a fantasy world where her son was still with her. She was looking for a way to cure his illness when she ran into us. So... How is Zuria now? She has been in a good mood the past few days, even humming a song when she returned from her stroll. She even began discussing with me the idea of using deliberate guidance to ease the illness. It was all going well, until last night. What happened last night? 
She spent a whole night staring at the shell the young master left behind, and the words that he had inscribed onto it. Then she broke down once more. I prescribed some sedatives, and she's currently resting. What is on the shell? But, but then what should we do? How can we help her? There has to be something we can do. Don't panic, Paimon. Even though this is a devastating piece of news, we must all calm down first. What should we do? I need to think. I need to remember the old house of the hearth and the children who lived in it. Those patients and what their doctors said back then. Hmm. Ah! What if... Dr. Jalakon, have you seen a picture book? The madame should have brought it back with her. The picture book? How can that help now? Hmm. Are you thinking about trying the guidance therapy she talked to me about before? Well, it's worth a shot. I'll go get the book. Yes, this is it. We still need to finish the adventure and the picture book? That's right. If what Dr. Jean Lacan said was true, the past few days have been very helpful to Zuria. So we should complete this journey. We need to show her that her child has found a happy ending in the world of her dreams. But... but wouldn't that just make it harder for her to accept reality? Huh. One must first face reality before accepting it. The Madame has been crushed by her feelings of grief and can no longer bring herself to face reality. Our first priority would be to get her out of this state. Right. Before today, I had thought she wanted to use Thelxie's fantastic adventures to save her son. But now... I think she might need it to save herself. And if we could complete it, we should be able to give her some feeling of inspiration and closure. Maybe those feelings would be enough to give her some courage to face reality again. We'll have to give it a try. There's no time to waste. Let's set off right away. Onward. We're teleporting this time. Okay, here we go. Okay, Ryzen, Nikita, Layla, Rena. We're here again. This is the final part of Thelxie's journey, but the most important person is missing. Who's that? It's supposed to be depicting a person holding like a, a sword in their hand. Is this more of that Ordo Narzissin Cruz nonsense again? Oh, hang on. I gotta translate this real quick. Dash dot... Dash dot dot dot... Dash dot... Dash dot dot dot... Dash dash dash. M A M A N Everyone, please don't be so down and gloomy. Remember what she told us? 
If we were to feel troubled, the patient would become anxious as well. <sighs> You're right. Paimon needs to smile. If we have to give something to Zuria, it should be our smiles. We have to keep smiling as we finish this adventure. For Zuria. And then she'll be able to recover, right everyone? I'm sure she will. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Watch out, everyone! They're coming at us again! There's no need to fear! Prince Thelsky looks stronger than ever today! He must be going all out! Still have a cooldown. Fire! Easy peasy. Easy peasy? I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I made a promise to my friends and I'm already very late. But, Madame, you're still. Don't try to stop me. Today's the most important day for treating Thelksy. We'll use the guidance method. Didn't you also say that you'd think it'd work? I'm not trying to stop you, madame. It's just... <sighs> Could you tell me the name of your child? Dr. Jalakan, how can you forget the name of your own patient? His name is Thalxi. He's the prince of the Kingdom of Water Imps. We will go today to reclaim his crown and attend his coronation ceremony. Yep, she's lost it. She's lost it. I see. Madame, please rest assured, everything is still on schedule. Your friends have already departed to find... Wait, look. They've already returned. Zuria! Zuria! We've retrieved the crown! Oh, Paimon, everyone, have you really? Yes. But the coronation ceremony still hasn't taken place, because we felt like you should be the one to preside over it. Wonderful! How wonderful! Thelxie, my child, my child, are you hearing this? Everything you lost will now come back to you, and soon, very soon, you will never be lonely again. Oh boy, this is a long one. Dash, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, 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 dash, dash, dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, 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 dash, dot, dash, dot, Dash dot dot dot. Dash dot. Dash dot dot dot. Dash dash dash. God damn it, I'm gonna need a moment to write this down. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta grab a pen. I have some spare paper, but I need to grab a pen real quick.
Okay, I got a pen. I can continue. And the last page of the picture book. It's still waiting for you to illustrate in color. God damn it, I got a pen that... Okay, never mind, it's working. Right, the picture book, the picture book. But I don't know what I should put on the last page. Um, I don't know, the coronation? Don't worry, Noxie and his friends all know what she got on it. Get ready, Zuria, we'll describe everything for you. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, okay. <clears throat> At last, Foxy and his friends were able to drive off the final invading monsters and achieve a dashing victory. Their success was complete, and the recovered crown resplendent. <laughs> Way to be dramatic, Paimon. The water imps. Finally returning to their homes, showered the prince with love and applause as he greeted them. They once again offered their precious shells to the prince and reconstructed the rainbow bridge of old. As he watched the scene unfold, the prince could not help but be touched by its beauty. By everyone's happiness, the prince stepped onto the rainbow bridge and took a good look at all the friends who had gone on the journey with him. There stood the traveler, goddess Paimon, Fremine, and... Huh? Where's the last person? The prince looked frantically around, but could not find the person he wanted to see most. At that moment, the person suddenly appeared on the other side of the bridge. She walked towards him with a smile and slowly lifted her veil. The prince could not hold back his tears. He recognized then that the mysterious person that had been by his side the whole time was none other than his mother. Surya walked across the bridge and placed the crown above the prince's head. She smiled down upon him as she said, My prince, my king, you shall never, ever need to feel lonely again. That's the end of the story, Zarya. All wrapped up wonderfully. Thank you. Thank you all. I am so sorry, my child. Mamma should have spent more time with you. Did you hear the story? You'll never have to feel lonely again. God damn it. Wait, is it the same one? Please tell me it's the same message. I don't want to have to re-translate everything. Uh... Looks like it. When decoded, it just says, uh, I love you, Mom. Same message? Yes. <laughs> Mama loves you too. They got the crying effect better. Uh, what's happening? Is Zuria talking to Thelxy? What is Thelxy saying? Quick, put on my diving helmet. There's a transcription module in it that's compatible with Thelxy's output signals. You should be able to use it to understand what Thelxy's saying. Aha! It does say that, but in French. I translated it. It comes out in French, but that is the English translation. So that's what Thelxy is saying. Mamo. Mamo loves you too. But I love you more, Mamo. Uh, what? What is this? What? Did you see something? Yes, yes I am. Mamon, I'm 
getting a little sleepy. If it's time for bed, can you hum a lullaby to me again? Of course, my dearest child. As long as you want to hear it, Mama will always hum for you. Thank you, Mamon. Your lullaby has always been my favorite. Now that I've heard it, I can return to my dream and to the kingdom of water imps in peace. What is Lumine seeing? <sighs> my poor darling. Please don't forget. I will always love you. My love is greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. <laughs> I won't forget, Mamon. And so is my love for you. Greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. Good night, Mamon. Lumine, you okay? Three days later, at Fremenay's camp... Traveler, Paimon, you're here. Fremenay! Why did you call us in such a hurry? Did you hear something from Zuria? Oh, if it's not good news, Paimon doesn't want to hear it! Don't worry, it's definitely great news. The Madame came here for a visit just now with her doctor. Color has returned to her cheeks, and she sounded full of energy as well. She said she'd like to return to the court to continue hosting the art exhibit. But this time, she'll work with her doctor to exhibit some picture books related to the illness. Oh. Of course, Thelxie's fantastic adventures and the guidance therapy will be included in the exhibit as well. She'd like to use her experience to help others. Yep. Mm hmm Here, please take this picture book with you. The Madame wanted you to have it. If, at some point in the future, you were to run into someone with similar troubles, she hopes the book would be of use to you. Uh, but this is her son's story, right? Is it really okay to give the book to us? Yeah. Don't worry, it's just a copy. Oh. She still has the original. It's extremely important to her. All right, then there's no problem. <sighs> it feels good knowing we've contributed to something important. Paimon definitely didn't expect the fantasy adventure to be so useful. Paimon was a little worried about how everything would turn out. After all, fantasy is just fantasy. Paimon, do you know what the Madame said? She said... That at the moment when she placed the crown on Thelxie's head, she felt like she really saw something beautiful. Her child had returned, and he told her that he loved her. She also said that was when she was finally able to bid farewell to her son. She felt like at that moment, she was healed by some mystical power, and she was filled with courage from head to toe. Uh... Why do I feel like mystical powers actually were involved here? Oh, really? But could that just be another part of her fantasy? I don't think so. Lumine here clearly saw it. Perhaps. But if fantasy is just fantasy, and the fantasy world is not real, then how could it still grant us these powers that we can continue to use in the real world? So, perhaps fantasy is not just fantasy after all. But, but what else can it be? 
a descent of the fairy tale world into the real world. At that time, the wondrous fairy tale temporarily became reality and influenced real things in our world. That has to be what happened. And given how Lumine saw everything, I kind of believe that. You saw it too, didn't you? Wait, he saw it too? What? That can't be what happened, right? There's just no way. Wouldn't it be like a miracle if that really happened? Paimon, have you already forgotten what happened in the Golden Apple Archipelago? Do you not remember everything that happened with... with Fischl and Co. Yes, I suppose that would be a miracle. I hope that everyone who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. I mean, relatively speaking, that is not the most radical thing that's happened. Oh, looks like I got all the, uh, the prizes here. I think I still have, like, one thing left. Uh, got the prize, got the prize. Oh, one last one. Active characters have more than 50% HP, normal attacks, charge attacks, 100% increased damage, what? Um, let's go with the freeze team. Uh... Layla, where are you? Oh. Usually I put Kokomi. This time, though, Farina. <laughs> My Farina, not the trial Farina. Yes, I know. My apologies. Not now. Whirling snow. Ah, oh, really? 
I thought I did better than that. Maybe I should have tried the Bloom team. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to the score, I was just going. You wanna wipe out an army, use Bloom. Oh yeah. Boom! Getting closer. How much time do I have left? 15 days? Okay, no worries. sword. Okay, was there anything else I wanted to do here? Right, the arts there's this no, not today. Not today. I wanna go do the uh the 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 uh the Nike of event quest stuff. Start that up. Log in faster, damn it. Alright. Switching categories. Goddess of Victory, Nike. Game capture, game capture! No, not working? Alright. Give me a second, it's still on the loading screen. You're not exactly missing much. No, is it really not working? Oh, hey, there we go. It was window capture, not game capture. Yo, 10? Ah, but I've already done the 20 pulls this week. I want to save it. I'm going to save it. Oh, good thing I didn't start it yet. <clears throat> in a dark room. <clears throat> Temperatures up on the surface have plummeted, especially in the northernmost regions where the Unlimited Squad is stationed. With winter temperatures reaching staggering lows of negative 60... What unit of measurement is that? I think regardless. Celsius or Fahrenheit, that is ridiculous. The conditions in these areas are so frigid that if you throw hot water into the air, it will evaporate and proceed to freeze instantaneously. I think I've seen videos of that, like people going outside with like a pot of hot water, throwing it in the air, and then like just it, it turning it into like snow immediately. <laughs> Probably in Russia. Russians get up to some crazy stuff, I swear to god. To survive in an environment like that, you must never forget the four things that I'm about to tell you. Water, food, fire, and shelter. 
<clears throat> In cold environments, constant movement is imperative. The moment you stop, your body will begin to seize up, and items will freeze. As you can see here, my gun is stuck to my hand. <laughs> If I were to encounter a rapture in this situation, our squad would be wiped out before we even knew what ha would hit us. In order to extricate the gun from my hand, what you want to do is... Use warm urine. Wait, what? Is that the right answer? <laughs> I have questions about that answer. You're lost and adrift in a snowy plain, and you're low on water. Surely you could simply take a few handfuls of snow and use them to hydrate? One might mistakenly think it's that easy. But if you were to make this mistake, the inside of your mouth would hurt. It also won't help with maintaining your body temperature. So, what should you do? Take the snow, pack it into a bottle, warm it up using your body's thermal heat before drinking it. Okay, that makes sense. That one makes sense. That should do it. This is the tenth time I've watched this recording. I've read all the survival books back to front as well. At this point, I should be beyond prepared to participate in a rescue operation. I don't know. You do need practical experience. Also, how well does this suit maintain heat? It looks very skin tight and not particularly thick. The same cannot be said about your ass. Still... Maybe I should do a final check just in case. Huh. What about grasshoppers? They're an excellent source of protein. Can't forget about grubs either. You've just gotta be sure to remove the heads before eating them. Reindeer hides can be stretched over wooden boards and made into a makeshift sled. Then you've got moss. After squeezing out the moisture, you can use it as a cushion. Okay, perfect. I can't possibly be any more prepared than I already am. I've got all the knowledge I could possibly need right up here. All that's left to do is to put it into practice. But then, what if I come off as too much of a tryhard to the others? It might be better if I try and maintain some modesty throughout this process. Alright, hang on. I got to... Ah, content classification... Sexual themes... Come on, with a dumpy like that, we I have to put that label on. <laughs> Event 1-1. Alright, who gives me a boost? No one that I normally use. Alice makes sense, because I think she, I, from what I've, from the brief description I read, like, she's the new member of Alice's and Ludmilla's team? Unfortunately, I had, do not have Alice leveled. Alright, the usual it is. Is it a bet? Then count me in! You want me over there? That could be arranged. Leave the fighting to me. You need me? My voice. I can already feel it starting to go. Sometime later in the northern base. My queen. Rabbity is here. 
Oh yeah, I forgot that's what she calls me. Long time no see. Hello, servant. I forgot she calls me that. I've been waiting for you. Alice and... Neve? Nev? Wait, who is that? I don't remember that name. You came later than I expected. Did something happen on your way here? Oh, is that Neve? Nev? We had to wait forever and a day for the polar bears to fall asleep. Deep sleeper, it says on her leg there. Oh, this is Nev. Neve? Nev? Neve? It could be because it's winter, but we were spoiled for choice when it came to ice caves. We figured there might be a polar bear inside one of them, so we burrowed our way in. We didn't find anything, so I ended up falling asleep hugging Burly Bear. <laughs> well, as long as no one was hurt, I suppose it's fine. Sorry to make you come out all this way, servant. Do you really have to call me that? Come here and sit by the fire. I sit by the stove and thaw off my frozen hands and feet. What's the mission this time? Did you not receive instructions from the Ark? All they told me was that I'd find out once I got to the north. I see. Then I'll try ex Then I'll try to ex- I think that's missing a word. Then I'll try to explain quickly. Some time ago, we received an extraction request from the Ark. A detachment of mass-produced Nikkei's were sent out to conduct a search. It's now been 28 days since they went MIA. Despite the extremely low concentration of alpha particles in the north, unable to establish contact with them, haven't received any reports. Last no coordinates placed them near the mountains in the north. They're just near Glitter Mountain, which is 3,000 meters of elevation. It was there that their signal was cut off. Glitter Mountain? That's not good. Even I tried to avoid that place if at all po- What's so bad about Glitter Mountain? What's so bad about that place? Exactly my question. It's super duper dangerous. Incredibly hostile environment. Swarming with raptors. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. If you falter there for even a second, you're likely to freeze to death. And it only gets worse the higher you go. Nikkei's are more resistant to the cold than humans, but if they're exposed to extreme conditions for prolonged periods of time, their bodies and minds will be pushed to their limits. <clears throat> if they exist in that state for too long, they'll have a mental breakdown. Correct. That's where you come in. I believe in your ability to look after your mental well-being. And there may be certain situations that dictate you make a judgment call. Oh no. Oh, I see where this is going. But... Are we even sure if a human can withstand the cold up there? I shared the same concern. That's why I was considering assigning the newbie as an additional support. Sorry, who? Her name is Tove, a Nikkei produced by Missilus. Been assigned to this area because she is an avid survivalist. Somewhat eccentric, but I'm sure she will be of help when it comes to your safety. Where's Tove now? If I were to guess, I would say she's probably pacing nervously in the hallway just outside that door. If you went out and greeted her, I'm sure she'd be thrilled. Okay. I hope nobody gets hurt! 
Gotta reload. Wait a second. Each of these guys are being taken out with like a single shot. But then again, it is only like stage one. I may look like a bunny, but I'll take on anyone, anytime, anywhere. Northern base, outside the reception room. Awkward silence. Are you told? Yes. <laughs> I'm a survival expert who will be exploring the wilderness with you, starting today. I'm looking forward to it. Survival expert? What exactly does that entail? Well, as you already know, in the harsh conditions of the North, even a simple jaunt outdoors can become a life-or-death struggle of man versus nature. To be asked to carry out a mission in this kind of environment is no small feat. However, there's no need for fear. To fear, I'm both a member of the Unlimited Squad and a survival expert. As long as you stick close to me, you won't have to worry about being unfamiliar with this place. I'll ensure your safety, guaranteed. Sounds good. I decide not to mention that I've already partaken in several missions up north. <laughs> Good. Then should we start preparing? To ascend those snowy mountain peaks? You'll need more than just a few extra layers. Thermal gear, gloves, hats, wool socks, and goggles to protect your eyes. All of these are indispensable. I'll bring those out of storage for you. All my prep is already done. But then again, I barely had to do anything to begin with. That's cause 90% of the equipment I need is out there in nature waiting for me. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you'll find out when we head out. You're gonna love it. Uh -huh. You sure about that, Tove? Noir isn't part of the team, Blanc. If she was, I would put you in the same team. Unfortunately, she is not here. Yet another victory I brought for you. No need to thank me. One second, I gotta crack open a cold soda. Nothing like a nice, refreshing sun kissed. Sometime later, in a snowfield up north. Phew. My goodness. Would you look at all that snow? I bet if I rolled around in it long enough, I'd end up becoming a snowman. The rescue operation is of paramount importance, so please refrain from such activities. Fine. I mean, if you did become a snowman, you might melt, and we can't have that. Eep. Alice, who is getting ready to dive headfirst into the snow, quickly falls back into position. <laughs> huh. There's definitely heavier snowfall than usual. With all the snow... It would be perfect to dig a nice little cave to sleep in. You're not really thinking of sleeping here, are you? As much as I'd like to, no. I know that I can't, at least not now. First things first, we need to find those Nikkeis, and then you and I can cozy up in our den and hibernate. Until then, you and I will just have to wait. 
crunch, crunch, and strides forward with palpable frivolity. You all seem so relaxed. Of course, it's not like I'm nervous or anything. <laughs> I mean, sure, this is my first mission, and we may end up being too late with our rescue efforts. Don't worry, it's understandable to have such reservations. There's not one among us who hasn't gone through the same self-doubt. But you've said it yourself, countless times before. In extreme situations, strong mental fortitude is what will help you survive. We don't want to drag our feet, and it's good to show initiative. But these rescue missions can last anywhere from a few days to an entire month? Oh boy. If we spent that entire time being high-strung, it might cloud our judgment when we need it the most, which would jeopardize the mission. Don't be ridiculous. I haven't had a negative thought cross my mind once this entire time. Glad to hear it. If that's the case, keep it up. You know it. You trust me, survivalist? Why do you ask? I think Ludmilla is a bit nervous since this is my first time on a proper mission. Considering that you're entrusting me with your life, I just want to make sure that you realize how thoroughly prepared I am. Ah. Huh? Achoo. <laughs> Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. Do you have any idea how warm this suit is? It keeps the heat in like nobody's business. How come you're trembling, then? Oh, that? Well... It's because I raised my temperature sensitivity to the max. Maintaining one's body temperature is crucial for survival in snowy environments. Sure, I could get around that by decreasing my sensitivity, but what a cop-out that would be. Where's the fun in that? You can stop giving me the stink eye. This isn't just about me, you know. By doing this, I can also get a better sense of how you're feeling out here in the cold. So just put your trust in me and fall- Ah. Uh, achoo. <laughs> Sniffle. Sorry, what was I saying? Fine, fine. You don't have to tell me. I'll decrease my sensitivity, okay? Good idea. <laughs> I demand satisfaction. This is tougher than we expected. What do you mean? You're blowing them all up with like a single shot every time. Sure did. A few hours later, this is where the last signal from the stranded Nikkeis was detected. Their company consisted of six people. There should be traces of their camp or food that they left behind. Let's split up. Search your surroundings and share anything that you find. Yes, queen. Sure thing. Um, Ludmilla? What about survivalists than me? Oh, right. Both of you have had a tough go of it, so try and... Both of you have had a tough go of it trying to keep up with us. Why don't you sit tight and take a rest until we're finished with our search? Eh? I feel like I'm getting brushed off here. Not at all. You have the most important responsibility of all. You must ensure that Servant remains in good health and he returns safely. How would you say Servant is faring at the moment? Touches my hand. Oh no, your hand is freezing. I'm okay. The heck you are. <laughs> if you don't warm up your hands pronto, you could end up getting frostbite and I'll have to amputate them. 
Dang it, I knew I shouldn't have lowered my temperature sensitivity so much. Well, I can see that you have your hands full. I'll proceed with my search and leave servant to you. <laughs> sure thing, you can trust me. As she as she cradles my hands in hers, I feel a warming sensation. Wait here just a moment. I'll make us a nice warm fire. First, I've got to gather some dry branches or bundles of dried grass. Then I've got to find something I could use as flint. Found it. Piece of rock? A dried riverbed. Look at this rock here. You see that slightly red hue? There's been iron oxidation. If you've got that, you can use any type of metal object that's lying around. Like this pipe here. Plank. Create some friction. Plank. Then you won't even need a lighter. Plank. What gives? Why isn't anything happening? In all the videos I saw, they just did this a couple times and they had a blazing fire in no time. Plank. 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 What in the world? Survivalist. Here, let me try. After 10 or so strikes. Aha! So this really does work. Fascinating. <laughs> She's never actually done this in real life. She's only watched the, the YouTube tutorials. <laughs> Slight difference between reading about something and actually doing it. Are you sure you're a survival expert? Of course. I wasn't assigned to the northern base for nothing. Sure, this may not have exactly been my finest hour, but your true survival skills shine when you successfully rescue those who are in need. Just cast aside any doubts lingering in your mind. And I promise that I'll show you what I've made of in due time. Anywho, we better move this spark over to the kindling. This position right here should be perfect. Everything else seems to be too damp. Even if you manage to gather dry kindling, your fire won't go anywhere if the ground is too wet. Move the spark over. How is it? Feeling any warmer? A little bit. Good. I was all worried about nothing. Turns out this is where my skills truly lie. Alright. Next. As long as you have me, you'll never lose this round. Does that say UFO self-parking? Easy peasy. Nothing to worry about. I may look like a bunny, but I'll take on anyone, anytime, anywhere. How much time does this event have left? Three days. Okay. <laughs> so, no rush. But I kind of want to rush. <laughs> I think we've searched enough. Everyone, report on your findings. I found a necklace that one of the princesses were wearing. Blink. Oh, dog tags. These production numbers line up with the missing mass-produced Nikkeis. Where did you find this? Right there, below that bridge. The ancient looking one? It seems that they camped below it and used it as a roof. Excellent work. 
My pleasure, <laughs> my, <laughs> my queen. <laughs> my turn. I started from the camping site that Alice found and followed the footprints much like I would track a polar bear. What footprints? Wouldn't they all be covered in snow by now? Not entirely. There were still some shallow divots that I could make out. Analyzing those is my specialty. Anyway, judging from the footprints that I found, all six of them were heading towards the dense pine forest. That's the path towards Glitter Mountain, isn't it? Why would they go in that direction? Not sure. Could be related to the mission they were on. Or they could have been fleeing raptures that were in pursuit. Either way, it's clear which path we have to take from here. Well done. Don't mention it. So... Is it my turn? Do you have something to report? Not really. She helped warm me up. She also taught me how to make a fire in a damp area. Oh right, I did. I also vowed to impress him and show my real survivalist side. Okay, very nice. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that side of you as well. Heh <laughs> Let's move out before he gets dark. Roger. I demand satisfaction. Tougher than you expected. The battle literally just finished. How is this tougher than you expected? Is that all? Buzz, buzz. Huh? Our radio is picking up some kind of signal. From which direction? Uh, adjusting the antennas. 8 o'clock, from the mountain ridge. Judging by how weak the signal is, I'd say it's coming from a fair distance away. What's the possibility that the signal is coming from the missing Nikes? Darn near a certainty. If there had been any other squad dispatched up north, the Ark would have notified us of it when they sent an extraction request. Then let's hurry and move. No. There is a deep valley that way. There's a steep downhill curve up ahead. If we rush headlong into it, there could be a serious accident. Can't we just use it like a big slide? If it were just us, we could. However, Servant is bound to get injured trying such a maneuver. <laughs> then let's make a sled and have gravity ride on it. And how... Pray tell, you intend on making a sled here of all places with no materials. I can do it. <laughs> I can make a sled, no problem. We'll scrounge up the sturdiest wood we can find to make a frame and attach some animal hide to it. With my know-how, I should be able to find an animal, no problem. We'll also have the help of Neve, who's an animal expert. Give me one hour and I'll have something workable. One hour, that's all I ask. I may be green, but I'm still a member a member of Unlimited. This is my time to shine, I can feel it. On top of that, those lost Nikkeis are waiting for us. Things may be getting desperate. Trust me, it pains me to delay their rescue even for a single hour. Fine. I understand you've spent a lot of time researching this sort of thing. You seem confident, so knock yourself out. Really? It's okay? I'll give everything I've got. I'll whip up a warp speed sled that will get us where we need to go in no time. Can you help out? Can you help me out, Neve? Nev? How? The main thing is that we've got to find a suitable animal hide to stretch over the sled. Hey, I want to come too. 
I want to see how you make the sled. They're all on high spirits. High morale is a good thing. Even better if it translates into good results. Whatever the result, it'll be a valuable learning experience. Nice of you to say that. They're counting on me to believe in them. A moment later. Ta-da! My super duper survival sled is now complete. It's a true wilderness sled made of wood and fresh reindeer hide. We can go down any slope with ease. Unfortunately, we didn't have a whole lot of hide to go around, so we could only make one. It's okay. <laughs> Servant can use the sled. The rest of us will have another way to get down. More importantly, have you taken the sled for a test drive of any kind? Um, no, not yet. Why don't you go and try it out on a small hill? Good idea. If you want to ensure his safety, we have to be thorough. How about it, survivalist? I made it so that one human, one Nikkei can get on. First things first, I want to check if it can handle the weight. Okay. I sit behind Toe, who seems filled with determination. What is this, Undertale? <laughs> the inaugural ride of the first sled I've ever made. This is quite an experience. Considering this is the first sled you've made, the quality is not too bad. That's what I thought too. I've been dying to do stuff like this for ages. That's why I read all those books. More than I can count. Phew. You ready to do this? Are there not any safety measures? Of course there are. First off, you've got your safety belt here. Okay. The backup safety belt. Oh. <laughs> me. <laughs> Just hold on tight, and I'll do everything I can to make to make sure you're safe. Just don't let go. I won't. Good answer. All right, then. Off we go. Okay, down goes the sled. I guess it's really fast. What is this? Why do I feel like there's gonna be some real tough stuff coming up? Also... Gotta get those recruit vouchers. I don't care about anything else. It's all about the recruit vouchers. some other time. I think I'll just keep going. Because I have a ton of the gems, and I, like, never use them ever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's keep going. Something doesn't feel right. Shake. Why aren't you stopping? I don't know. It just looked like a tiny slope from the top. But I don't see our landing spot anymore. And the sled. Ow, my butt. Ugh. Hold up. Do you see that behind us? Looks like a snowstorm is brewing. And it's coming right for us. Oh, that's an avalanche. Oh, we're trying to outrun an avalanche. I've got a turn. 
desperately attempting to outflee the avalanche. We become one with the sled and slide down the steep hill. You okay? I didn't lose you, did I? I'm alive, but barely. Well, that's good. We've got to get out of here. If we stay where we are, there might be a second avalanche. I can't move my leg. Don't worry. I'll pull you to safety. Sled and all. The avalanche is still happening. Another avalanche occurs, just like she said. The entire slope is consumed in a mountain of snow. No way we can go back the way we came. Uh-oh. What should we do? We're still screwed. Calm down, we still got our phones. Oh, right. I totally forgot. Thank goodness for modern technology. You can call from just about anywhere, so it's nearly impossible to get stranded. Uh-oh. No, sig no signal. Let me check. I take out my own phone. Toe? What is the alpha particle concentration here? I don't have any measuring instruments, so I'm not sure. But I doubt the alpha particles are the problem. Alpha particles tend to be scarce up north. Then again, in remote mountainous areas like this, there are times when the signal is unable to go through. Then we can't rely on contacting any outside help via phone. A flare? I gave mine to Nev. I thought about bringing one, but my luggage was too heavy as is. Just build a fire beacon? Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, what can we use as flint here? Not seeing anything. No worries, I can just use the spare battery and wires I've got. Oh, okay. Where'd they go? Oh, jeez. Keep it together. You're a survival expert, remember? You still have that much confidence in me? You're a really nice person. Just don't get discouraged and keep your head in the game. Where do they usually start on the shows that you've watched? Usually, they'll have the host pretend that they're stranded somewhere and reaching a road, village, or some other place with traces of civilization is the goal. Actually, when you think about it, it's not too different from our current situation. Yes, very similar. So you see, we can make it out of here. I think you're right. We can think about it as us being two survival show TV hosts who have just parachuted out of a helicopter. Yes, that's it. It's hard to explain, but I feel somehow reinvigorated. I'm not exactly sure how, but I think we're gonna survive this. The important thing is strong mental resilience and perseverance. and keeping ourselves properly fed. <laughs> Let's go. I'll find something to get you fueled up. I'd be most grateful if you could. I demand satisfaction. Next stage. My crow thirsts for blood. Gotta reload. We break back with you in a second. Don't give up. Let me help. Score 
Another one for the good guys. Hope the syndicate doesn't get wind of it. Okay, next. When you're out in the cold, food is key to survival. Crunch, crunch. Trudges through the snow towards the nearest tree. This tree here is a species that only grows in extreme cold. Rich in nutrients and moisture. Produces a knife from her jacket pocket. Stripping off the bark. It serves as a shelter for numerous small critters. We're lucky we'll rustle up a squirrel or a bird. We could also turn up some beetles, ants, and other excellent sources of protein. Beetles wouldn't be too bad. You don't have to pretend to be tough around me. Most people can't stand creepy crawlies. Just close your eyes and swallow. It isn't really that... Oh god, the phrasing on that... The phrasing right here. <laughs> Alright, let's see what this tree has in store for us. Stripping off more bark. Let's see. Did you see- wait, what? Something just whizzed past. Is it a worm? No way. A worm wouldn't be living that deep inside a tree. And besides, it wouldn't be that fast. Oh, it's a centipede. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's a centipede. Just look at all those legs. There's gotta be over a hundred of them. Hold still, I'll try to smack it and catch it. <laughs> no, don't. It could be dangerous. It could bite and kill you. I pick up a sturdy looking stick lying on the ground and give the centipede a good whack. <laughs> Clings tightly to my body. Is it dead? Are you sure you got it? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> is she scared of bugs? Or is it centipedes in particular? Are you sure? It looks like it's still moving. Don't worry, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Any chance you could come down now? You're kind of heavy. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. I was too busy thinking about that centipede. All I wanted was to get away from it and climb up to a safe place. Turns out you were the closest thing available to climb. Can we stay like this for a little longer, though? I'm still a bit uneasy. First time seeing a centipede in person, huh? I'm... Bye. I wasn't myself back there. I don't usually get startled. Hey, yo, Michael. Hey, what's up? Looks like you just got off work. And six months. Oh god, has it been that long already? <laughs> six months. Just got home? Alright. Oh, hydrate as well. Okay, okay. <clears throat> ah. Nothing like a nice sun kiss. Right. For like the thirst. For the first 30 minutes of stream, I was finishing off the, uh, the Genshin event. That took a turn I was not expecting. But thankfully, it all worked out in the end. And now we're doing this. The new, uh, event. Story event thing. Featuring this new character. And her... Great butt. <laughs> I didn't realize we'd be up against such a formidable foe like a centipede. <laughs> you seem to have pulled yourself together admirably. Yes, well, I got startled, but I guess it wasn't that bad. You don't have to worry about me too much, haha. <laughs> it 
In a way, though, there's a silver lining to all this. Amidst all the chaos, I did manage to scrounge up a decent energy source. A juvenile northern longhorn moth. As you can see, it's nice and uh, plump and creep. Uh, delicious, I mean. Like most insects, this little fella is packed full of protein. Well, bon appetit. What stops? <laughs> Something wrong? I was just thinking. Since it's a delicacy at all, it's only fair that you get to try it first. <laughs> She's chickening out. She wants me to go first. She wants me to go first. After all, I'm a Nike and you're a human. You need the nutrients way more than I do. Okay, give it here. I stare at the squirming larva. Do I chew it? Or just do it or just go for the swallow. Swallow it. How to taste? Surprisingly tasty, kinda nutty, or at first kinda nasty. <laughs> wow, really? Toe. You've gotta eat one too. <laughs> Your turn! Look, I'm sorry that I tried to trick you into eating them all. My bad. I know how desperately our how, how desperate our situation is. It's just that I thought I'd be mentally prepared after watching all those videos <laughs> and reading all those books. She only ever watched the YouTube tutorials and never like practiced. <clears throat> I figured I'd be able to close my eyes and pop these down the hatch. Oh yeah, I just remembered. My PC building stream. The I uploaded the VOD onto YouTube. Somehow. Somehow. It has a hundred views. I don't know how people are finding it. But that's the most amount of views I have on any of my VODs on YouTube. Somehow. <laughs> I'm just like... What? But now that they're here in front of me, I don't think I can do it. We well, win. here's the battle. Fish nets. Am I right? <laughs> Is that all? Whoosh. It's already getting dark. I can feel the temperature dropping by the second. We haven't found any proper food sources yet. And we don't have a fire either. First things first, I think we should hide from the wind. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I was thinking the same. Anywhere we can use as shelter? Yeesh. There's really nothing. We're in the middle of a field. However, when there's a will, there's a way. We can dig a makeshift cave in the snow, just like when polar bears hibernate. The only problem is that we don't have anything to use as a shovel. Takes out her gun, turns on the safety. This should do the trick. Wait, is she just gonna blast a hole in the snow? So long it doesn't accidentally fire. Oh. Anything I can do to help? Huh. Could you maybe find a decent stick and help me dig? That should do it. Let's find a good place to dig. This may sound obvious, but it'd be better if we could dig into a slope rather than flat ground. 
Let me check which direction the wind is blowing. This spot seems ideal. I don't think we'll get as much wind here. Yeah. Starts using her gun. Dig using the stick. Survivalist, I'll dig a hollow where we can both lie down. Can you dig an opening below that? Think of it as the lower part of a bunk bed. I read this in an old book once. When you dig out a lower part as well, the cool air goes down and causes the warm air to circulate upwards. Huh. Sure thing. More whooshing air? Just as the wind starts to pick up, we finish digging a hollow just big enough for the both of us to lie down and sleep. We finally did it. Let's huddle in here and get away from this darn wind. A rescue team or some errant raptors might come by, so I'll stay up and keep watch. For the sake of your health, you should get some sleep. Wouldn't it be better if we take turns? No. I'll do it. I've got to live up to my role as proud member of Unlimited. Exploring the unfamiliar and rescuing those stranded is my job. That's what I'm meant to do. Yes, I may have shown you a side of me that I'm not proud of, but I still believe my determination is second to none. <laughs> Seeing this sight fills you with determination. Save. So trust me when you when I say you can depend on me now. Besides, I feel better knowing that I'm doing something. If you say so, then okay. Rest well. If you're cold, you can scoot closer to me. Okay. I pat Tove on the shoulder as she flashes an amorous wink. Oh? Let's get started. It's nice to be out of there. I thought we were going to be buried alive under all that snow. Anyway, what a lovely morning. Achoo. You okay, survivalist? It's freezing out here. What? Don't tell me you got hypothermia. I stuck close to you all night so I could share my body temperature. Apparently that wasn't enough. Oh boy. Just wait a moment. Let me give you a once-over. That's a relief. All you've got is a small cold. Don't scare me like that. I was really thinking the worst. I thought for sure you had hypothermia. We better act quick, or otherwise that is going to be the case. Point taken. If we can find a cave or building where we can at least warm up, then we'd be able to continue moving after you recover. What the? What's wrong? Can't you see? Over there. It's faint, but there's a light on the mountain. If it's bright enough to notice, even in the daytime, it must be a street light in front of a building. In a remote area like this? 
You see some every once in a while. Old mountaineering clubs, cafes, or cabins meant to be used as shelter. You can find all sorts of different structures in far-flung areas. Not only that, but unless I'm mistaken, that's the location of where... That's the location we were told about during our mission briefing. Wait. No, it couldn't be. Could the Nikes we're looking for be in there? That is certainly a distinct possibility. No way. Things are suddenly looking up. We should be able to reach there in half a day. We can check if there are any survivors staying there. And we can warm you up while we're at it. True, true. We should get a move on while I still have the energy. Cough, cough. It sounds like you're getting worse. What was that that people always say in moments like these? No matter how tired you feel, don't close your eyes. I'm not dead just yet. You say that, but you don't look so good. Here, let me carry you. We've got a fair distance to cover until we get to that building. If you hang on to my back, I'll be able to warm you up somewhat. Alright, <laughs> I get on her back. Sorry. It's okay. I relied on you way more than I would have liked. So now it's my turn to step up. I know I talk a big game, but I promise to keep you alive, and I intend to keep that promise. So don't you give up on me. The most important thing when it comes to survival is never giving up. You hear me? Ah, I hear you. Keep it up. Yep, keep it up. Good, good, good advice, uh, Pepper. Gotta reload. I never noticed that A2's got a nice butt as well. And then again, they all kind of do. And then there's 2B with that ridiculously fat ass. Score another one for the good guys. If the syndicate doesn't get wind of it. Crunch, crunch. Hop, hop. Once we pass this hill, we should reach the place where we saw that streetlight. There's a high chance we'll run into those missing Nikkeis. They'll be the first people that I've ever rescued. Uh, we're not quite out of the woods just yet. But before we head out with our survivors in tow, I'll have to ask them for some heat packs or warm water. Something to get you warmed up. Here we are. Plop. <laughs> Collapses in the snow. I think we're in the right place though. There, you see the sign on that building? M Mountain Rescue Base. I think that's where the survivors could be camping out. I... see. Huh? How come your voice is so weak? Let's hurry and get inside to warm you up. Mountain Rescue Base. Ooh, squeaky door noise? Is anyone here? I'm Toe from the Unlimited Squad. We came looking for a missing Nikkei squad. Could anyone help us? No signs of life. You're right about that. Maybe they're all taking a nap. Let's take a look further inside. Is that a radio? I think I know what this is. This must be the radio that sent the distress signal. That would mean the owners of this radio have to be around here somewhere. It just closer to the door where the sound is coming from. Should we open it? Do it. More squeaky door noise? Um. What's inside? A Nikkei that has suffered damage, severe damage. Suffered severe damage. Another two with similar injuries. Three round-shaped mechanical devices. 
encase something fragile? I think these are the ones we were looking for. They're in pretty rough shape. They're all still... They're still breathing. Yes, but given the extent of this damage, they won't be alive for long until unless we do something. What do we need to do? Given their current state, their bodies will soon be unable to supply oxygen to the brain. Before that happens, we need to remove their brains and place them into a protective device. Something we call a brain shelter. <laughs> beeping? Why is there beeping? A red light flashing. Which is exactly what those are. Their battery level is awfully low. They each already have a brain inside. Whoever these brains originally belong to are in dire shape. Aw oh, man. What do we do? Calm down. You're the only one they can rely on right now. I know that, but I'm not skilled to perform emergency treatment on someone who's suffered extensive damage. Basic survival knowledge. The only thing I can do for them is gather whatever materials I can find nearby and create some kind of distress signal. Then the rest of Unlimited will come and do what's necessary. Wait a sec. Apparently there is something you can do for them. I guess so. Hold on just a minute. I'm a survival expert. I'm a survival expert, dang it. I will save these people. Okay, let's go. It's sink or swim. Whether it's a beacon fire or something else, we gotta get it burning nice and bright. So that everyone here can be rescued in time. Alright, I'm not leaving that on a cliffhanger. I'm getting more stuff. To the shop. Oh, and more of these. I've already cleared out most of them? Damn. Alright, back in the fray we go. Time to kill. Bit aggressive, but I like the attitude. We'll be right back with you in a second. Is that how she, is that how she reloads? She kind of like charges up her sword. <laughs> Yet another victory I brought for you. No need to thank. All right. The sheer vastness of Glitter Mountain is mind-boggling. If we want anyone to see our signal, we'll have to make the fire as big as possible. With a whole lot of smoke. Best type of wood for that would be pine. The resin is highly flammable, tendency to burn exceedingly well. Fortunately, there are plenty of pine trees around here. We'll be able to secure what we need quickly enough. A moment later, hauled in several pine trees that she has cut down. Check it out. I cut down the biggest, sturdiest looking trees I could find. <laughs> Plump caterpillar lands on her arm. <laughs> Get it off. Wait a second. No, on second thought, don't. All bugs are good sources of protein. I can handle this. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> Did she eat it? <laughs> Next, we need a shield of some kind to protect the fire beacon from the wind and snow. 
By the same token, we don't want to diminish the visibility of our fire. We'll need to use materials that's both transparent and heat resistant. Oh. Sheets of plastic? What are you gonna do with that? You'll see, if we take the plastic sheets like so, and secure them on top of the wood using this wire... Huah! What the heck? Why is it it's securing in place? Give it here. I'll try. Break the caterpillar. No. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to tell you, Michael, but, um, Frank got eaten. No. I can't have you doing this when you're sick. I'll figure it out. Ta-da! The shield is now complete. May not be much to look at, but as long as it does its job, then it doesn't matter. All that's left to do is come up with something that will make our distress signal really pop. Where'd you get those? Oh, these aren't mine. These are from the- they're from the other DKs. They're all busted, so they can't be fired. <clears throat> Only using them for the gunpowder that's inside. Removes the magazines. Shakes out all the bullets. I think... What? I had what I think may have been a stroke of genius. I'm gonna use the gunpowder in these bullets to amplify our distress signal. Inherently a bit of a risk, but it should create a mini explosion <laughs> that'll shoot up at least a few meters high. Okay. This isn't going exactly as planned. Gotta be careful, so I can't brute force them open. Should I do it? No. You and those other Nikkeis are depending on me. It's time for me to step up to the plate. I've got to do this on my own, even if it is hard. It worked! Did you see that? I give her a pat on the shoulder. Moment later... Unignited fuses? Stands against the raging wind. You see that frame over there? That one, the one that's about to collapse. Observation tower? Okay, it used to be an observation tower. Scurry up there, ignite these two fuses. Hopefully the rest of Unlimited will be able to see our signal. Regardless of wherever they are on Glitter Mountain. Are you sure you'll be okay doing this alone? Survivalist, please. You've asked me that a million times already. You don't even have any flint. How do you plan on igniting it? I won't need any flint, because I got this. Old lighter? I found it in one of the garbage cans. Oh. Improvisation is an integral part of survival. Then I guess preparations are complete. I thought exactly. Let's do this. Sometime later. Stand at the top of the platform. Releasing the fuses. Prepares to ignite cloth. Oh. Okay, okay. She ignites one of the fuses. Yikes. The instant the flame makes contact with the gunpowder, an incendiary projectile launches skyward. Nearly singed her eyebrows with the first fuse. When lighting the second fuse, another fireball throws up into the air, biggest titan. Flames consume the cloth wrapped around the tip, stick itself. Is she on fire? She looks like she's on fire. If she drops in now, will it be too soon? Her hand has clearly been burned along with her wrist. The melting flare has trickled past her elbow onto the rest of her arm. 
searing pain beyond what can be curved by her temperature sensor. That has got to be excruciating. He is too much to handle, breathing with pain. Any reasonable person would have dropped the flare long ago, but... Nope, she can't drop it. She is determined. She is filled with determination. I can't come this far just to give up. Holds her left arm up high. The rising flames now ravaging her own arm. Starts waving her arm slowly. A beacon fire. Creating a beacon fire. Oh, the flames are spreading. It's okay. I can do it. I can withstand this. Amidst the raging northern snow and wind, the light burns bright, announcing to all, to, to all who see it that the flickering flames of lives there are about to be snuffed out. Huh? Queen, look over there. What a beautiful flame, and so bright. That flame is coming from... Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I believe so. Find us the shortest route possible. Proceed at max speed. <laughs> Alright, they, they gotta book it. They're calling for our aid. And it's our duty to respond in kind. <laughs> Don't go into the light. No. It's not your time. Don't go into the light. This time, Michael, they need to go to the light. Looks like they got this handled. Bunny girl never loses. I hope you're right. You were clearly right. Is that all? I have no idea how to interpret that sound. Off in the distance, a snowstorm can be seen gathering. Cove, we're in trouble. Survivalist. Can you hear me? You need to take cover. Snowstorm is headed straight for us. That's no snowstorm. We did it. They've come for us. What? Amongst the wall of white that I thought was an encroaching snowstorm, several Nikkeis can be suddenly seen sliding down the slope. As if they were skiing. Ah. The rescuers have finally come for us. Ah, flashbang. Unlimited. What a warm welcome. I'd say that sliding down the slope without any equipment worth it. I guess. But it was still a long way down. If I had tied a rope to my body and rappelled down, it would have been faster. <laughs> or we could have... <laughs> Or we could have used a rabbit hole to warp down. You all came. You actually came. <clears throat> you performed admirably. Thank you for calling this place to our attention. But what happened to your arms? Oh, this? Nothing major. I was holding the signal flares I'd made and got a bit carried away. Ah, that stings. Your arms are torched. I'm sorry. I was just so desperate, this was the only thing I could think of. But it worked, didn't it? So I have no regrets. More lives will be saved. Least of all the survivalists. For me, that makes it all worthwhile. Well then. It's up to us to ensure your sacrifice wasn't made in vain. Let's head inside, we've got no time to waste. Moment later, inside the mountain rescue base. Three critically injured, three with only their brains preserved. Alice? Yes. Inspect the damaged Nikkeis. I mean, check on the princesses who are sleeping. The wounds inflicted by the Queen of Hearts will be deep. 
Oh, right. She's she's still entertaining the whole fantasy thing. We must ensure we take precaution and all necessary precautions before transporting them. Yes, Queen. And Neve. Nev. I still don't know how to say that name. Yes? The brain shelter seems to be low on power. Switch to backup power and prepare to transport it back. Roger that. What about me? You should take care of those injuries you've sustained. Our rescue effort has only just begun. What do you mean? First off, we will file requests with the big three for new bodies. Each and every one of these Nikkeis will be requiring new replacements. We can't afford to dilly-dally getting these ladies back to the Ark. The problem, however, is what happens after we get them back. You, of all people, know what kind of place the Ark is. A concrete jungle where humanity is lost in the pursuit of ever greater efficiency. None of the big three will want to bother with replacing the bodies of mass-produced Nikkeis. I don't know, I feel like I could convince Mustang. But that doesn't mean that we should throw up our hands and give up hope. Many Nikkeis, ourselves included, have ventured out into these extreme conditions, all in the name of ensuring humanity can live on. We can't let these Nikkeis die a meaningless death out here. <clears throat> Without a chance to live on themselves. That's why we're exhausting every last option at our disposal. For those with severe injuries, we will transplant spare parts from the same model. In this situation, the only viable transplants would be arms and legs. Appendages are fairly disconnected from the central nervous system. Even then, their body may reject the new parts. They may feel as if a foreign object has been stuck to their body, and this could result in a mental breakdown. However, if it means a chance that they will survive, no matter how small we have to try, sounds like there'll be a tough journey ahead. It will. But if we were to give up now, we would be doing a disservice to the sacrifices these Nikkeis have made for us. Stairs at the rescue operation site. There were six squad, six members in the squad. Now we have three grievously injured and three with their brains in the brain shelter. Each one of them took care of their comrades as they fell one by one. They held on until their own body broke down, and they struggled all the way into this building. <clears throat> Still, seeing all that they managed to achieve, Witnessing their noble struggle to remain alive, their desperate struggles for survival, it's overwhelming. A feeling that you can't put into words. What do you think, Toe? Do you think you're cut out for this business? I... Okay, guess story's not over yet. All right, let's keep this train going. I'm not scared, so long as Noir is here with me. Jesus, that thing is just going. I can do this. Believe in yourself, Pepper. Don't give up. Let me help. This is tougher than I expected. Choo -choo I may look like a bunny, but I'll take on anyone, anytime, anywhere. Is that the end of the story? That can't be the end of the story. I'm not scared, so 
long as Noir is here with me. Gotta reload. There it is. Satellite HSTA. Score another one for the good guys. Hope the syndicate doesn't get wind of it. There has to be more. This won't end well for you. Nothing to worry about. I may look like a bunny, but I'll take on anyone, anytime, anywhere. Hang on, is that it? Is there no... The... the... Hang on a second. to use unlock event archives event from obtained from event missions oh yeah this bit hang on I feel like there's got to be more it kind of ended on like a oh first things first missions settings lobby Nikkei's Nikkeipedia no costume no Where, where was that item? Cliffhanger. Yeah, kinda. <clears throat> that ending, though, was a bit of a, like, a cliffhanger. It kinda left 
on like an unanswered question. But like the first few stages here didn't give any further story. Like I didn't get any further like cutscenes or anything. All right, one more time. I'll see for sure if there's anything left. Good thing I got plenty of things. All right, let's keep going. Let's see how far this goes. Let's have some fun, shall we? really nothing or are they gonna make you do like all of it and save the last bit of story for like the very very end I demand satisfaction I'm starting to think that there's actually nothing left Where are you aiming? Where are you aiming? Don't give up. Let me go. The boss is that one. Where are you aiming? I'm thinking manual control. Let's get started. around. I feel duped. Break the shield. At least they're targeting the boss this time. Until it starts jumping around. Where are you aiming? Oh well, they got it in the end. Score 
another one for the coup guys. Hope the syndicate doesn't get wind of it. We did all of that, and there was like nothing. Left. No story, nothing. No, no little like bow on top. Wrap it up with a neat little bow. No. I'll share my luck with everyone. I guess not. I guess so. I mean, she's she's asking the same question I am. Is that all? Yep, that's it. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Here, what's this? Owned five. Where to use unlock event archives? Where? All right, hang on a second. I gotta look up where that nonsense is. Give me a mo. Getting any clear answers? Lobby? Outpost? Command center? Recollection? Thank you! Random Reddit post. This is where you can play and re-experience previous events. You unlock event records to play. Special currency required to unlock. Unlocked record... Event records can be asked uh, without any additional positions. Rewards previously obtained cannot be obtained again. Are there?
So I had no idea this was here. They're only... It how did, who, who is deciding like what events he can like choose to replay? All right. Well, I think tomorrow the like the the event stage keys will replenish. So I'll go check that out to see if there's anything left. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Anything else I'm missing? Co-op? Oh. I'm just back here. Alright, why not? Is it a bet? Then count me in. You want me over there? That could be arranged. Leave the fighting to me. You need me? All right. Let's see what this is about. Oh, hang on. I'm going to need manual control for this. Can't hit the stupid things. Watch, 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 watch. Got it. Did it work? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, not good, not good. Duck! Jesus! Don't give up. Get me home. It's hard to aim at the stupid things. Oh god, here it comes. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, looks like we broke something. Stop moving! Fuck! Reload, reload, reload. Please reload. Did we get it? I was panicking the entire time. Yet another victory I brought for you. No need to thank you. Oh. Alright, to the shop. Alright. I think that's enough of Nike for today. But I'm not ending stream just yet. Just gonna open up a new browser window. Mori Kitchen has uh, some new videos out, I think. Check that out first. Uh, here we go. Main window capture. Ah, right, she blows. Done. Gaming. Now. Kids.
Just chatting. Disable the sexual themes label <laughs> because there's no more ridiculous cake jiggling everywhere. Ah, hang on, I gotta... There we go. Oh yeah, this is a Charlotte specialty. I don't know if I have the recipe, though. I have Charlotte, but I don't know if I unlocked the... Prerequisite recipe. Parsley. Gotta dice that shit up real good. Four tomatoes. Tomatoes. Who says a tomato like tomato anyway? Oh, you gotta like hollow it out. Alright, you hollow out the tomato. Oh, and use the top like a lid. Oh, I see. You cut off the bottom so it's a flat surface. Okay, I see now. Every time I watch their videos, I get hungry. <laughs> I gotta see if I have a snack in the kitchen. Like, do you have any chips left or something? Oh, some wine? Okay. But then again, this is Fontaine cooking. I gotta see if there's a difference between just, like, an any old wine that you drink versus, like, cooking wine. I feel like there might be a difference, <laughs> slightly. Huh. Oh, one egg, don't forget about that. Yeah, mix that up real good. Get a nice even uh, distribution. Okay, so they fill in the, the hollowed-out tomato. Mozzarella cheese, huh? Oh, it's like a core of cheese. And then they wrap the, uh, the this filling around it. I see. A lot of filling. And then you, uh... Okay. Filling up the rest of them. Don't forget the cheese core. Pinch of salt and pepper. Butter. Okay. Little slab of butter on top of there. Precariously balance the tomato top. 
olive oil. Cooking wine and regular wine basically the same thing? Are they? Huh. Maybe percentage uh percentage alcohol is different? Okay, possibly. I don't know. God damn it, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Remember to like and subscribe! Here we are to- Ah, uh, damn YouTube and all these ads, I swear to god. Ooh, melty cheese. Oh yeah, drizzle it. <laughs> the good old potato. You know, I don't like it when like people call a bad PC a potato PC. That just ruins the good name of the potato, alright? Like who hates the potato? I mean really. Like, who, who can diss the potato? You got french fries, you got potato chips, you got mashed potatoes, baked potatoes. I'm pretty sure you can make, like, potato vodka or some kind of potato-based alcohol. Main difference between cooking wine and drinking wine is quality. I see, according to Food Network. Wait, is this fish? I, I, I looked away for a second. I think it is fish, though. Vodka is sometimes made out of potatoes. See? Don't diss the potato, it's very, uh, multi- multi-use. Oh, beer, okay. Oh, beer-battered fish, that's right. Is this just fish and chips? <laughs> Essentially? Yeah, you got the beer battered fish. Is that a oh pickled cucumber, aka pickles. Boiled egg white. Dice that up real. Dice that up real good. Quite a bit of it. Mustard as well. Uh, the aforementioned egg whites and pickles. Pinch of salt. Black pepper. That seems more like a pinch. Squeeze that lemon juice right in there. Fresh lemon juice. What kind of... <laughs> what is this exactly? It's not like a relish or anything. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hang on one damn second. Ah. Now I see. I just noticed that my model, the mouth on my model wasn't moving. <laughs> Somehow settings got reset. What the hell?
It's like a newspaper cone or something. Oh, the steam bird. Paper airplane there. <laughs> ah, it's like an inner layer. So you can put actually put the oh cheese, cake flour, butter, melt it up real good. Milk. Ah yes, the trifecta of dairy, butter, milk, and cheese. <laughs> Make into like a nice cream, creaminess. It's just fish and chips. Oh, <laughs> Damn, look at all that cheese, yo. Oh yeah, that other mixture. Sprinkle some parsley. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks so good. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry now. Oh, that looks so good. As a content creator- Nope, back off. I've seen that ad so many damn times. It's just an Intel ad for their 14th gen CPUs and Intel Arc GPU. Alrighty, but yeah, I'm gonna call it here. <laughs> I've done everything I wanted to do today. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, everyone. Hope y'all had fun. I know I did. But yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you to anyone watching the VOD. How is my new PC? Oh, the PC. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I tested it out, uh, tried playing Fallout 4. I cranked the settings up to Ultra, ran at a nice 60 FPS. I only played for like half an hour just to kind of test it out and like see the, uh, the temperatures, but overall, pretty good. But yeah, okay, uh, let me see who's on so I can raid. Refresh. All right, who's on? Oh, quite a few. Yep. Load alt. Damn it. Okie doke. Let's see. Oh, looks like Ruby is on. I want to go say hi. Raid, raid, raid. All righty. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for being here. Remember to hydrate and rest up, eat, all that good jazz. And, uh, peace!